In section 1.3, we talk about the connectivity of a graph. And this gets at the idea of whether or not it's possible to go from one vertex in the graph to another vertex in the graph by traveling along edges in the graph. Um, so we'll start with a few definitions here. So let's let u and v be vertices in some graph G. So this notation means u and v are vertices in a graph G. We say that a u to v walk in G is just a sequence of vertices of G, starting with U and ending with V, such that consecutive vertices in your list are adjacent. In other words, it's just a way of listing vertices in your, in your graph, starting at U, going to another vertex, to another, to another, traveling along edges in your graph. Now, if U and V are actually the same vertex, if you're starting and ending on the same vertex, we would call this a closed walk. And otherwise, if U and V are different, then we would call it an open walk. And we say that the length of a U to, we, U to V whoops, walk is the number of edges, including any repeated edges in your walk. Um, if your walk is length zero, if it just starts at U and ends at U and it doesn't do anything, we call it a trivial walk. So let's look at an example to make sure we understand just what a walk is. So here's a graph that we've seen before. Um, it has the vertex at V1 through V5, and it has uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 edges. Um, and I'm going to give an example of a V1 to V4 walk. Now, this isn't the only V1 to V4 walk. There's lots of different ones, but one possible V1 to V4 walk would be I have to start at V1, I have to end at V4, and I have to travel along edges. So maybe I start at V1, then I go to maybe V3, then maybe I go to V4. I could end it here if I wanted to, but I'm going to make this walk a little bit longer. So now I'm going to go to V2, and then go back to V4 again. Alright, so this is an example of a V1 to V4 walk because it's a sequence of vertices in the graph, and any pair of consecutive vertices are adjacent, right? There's an edge from V1 to V3, there's an edge from V3 to V4, etc. So you'll notice that we actually visited V4 twice here, and we actually traveled along this edge from V4 to V2. We traveled along this edge twice. First we went from V4 to V2, then we came back again. That's allowed in a walk. You're allowed to repeat edges, you're allowed to repeat vertices. The only real rule with a walk is that um, you need to be traveling along edges in your graph, right? Now, since this walk started at V1 and ended at a different vertex V4, this is an example of an open walk. If we wanted an example of a closed walk, you could do something like, let's say, V3 to V5 to V1, back to V3 again. This is a V3 to V3 closed walk. And again, that's not the only closed walk from V3 to V3. We could have done that whole thing backwards. We could have um, repeated some vertices and edges if we wanted to. But um, in some cases, it might be useful to try and, and say, well, what if we wanted a walk where you're not actually repeating any edges, right? If, if this is representing some real life problems, sometimes it's useful to specify that we don't want to repeat any edges, or maybe we don't want to repeat any vertices. So we have notation and we have definitions for that as well. Um, we say that a U to V trail is just a special U to V walk where it doesn't repeat any edges. Now you could repeat vertices in a U to V trail, you just can't repeat any edges. Okay, but in a U to V path, this is going to be a U to V walk that has no repeated vertices. And if it has no repeated vertices, then there's no way that you could repeat an edge. Because if you were repeating an edge, you'd have to go to those endpoints at least twice. And so this has no repeated vertices and thus also no repeated edges. So let's look at another example to make sure we understand the difference between a walk, a trail, and a path. So in a way, they get less restrictive as you go on, So, or I should say more restrictive. So a walk doesn't really have any restrictions other than you have to travel around edges. Um, a trail, you're allowed to repeat vertices, but you're not allowed to repeat any edges. And a path, you can't repeat vertices or edges, right? So let's look at this graph here. 
Um, I'm going to give some examples of, let's say, first let's do an example of an AC walk, an A to C walk that's not a trail or a path. In other words, we're going to find an example of an A to C walk that repeats vertices and repeats edges. So here would be an example of that. I'm going to start, maybe I'll go from A to B to D to E to F to G. Follow along and make sure that these are actually edges in my graph, right? A to B to D to E to F to G. Let's say I go back to E, uh, then maybe to D to B, and finally back to C. All right, make sure that these are all edges, but they are. It starts at A and it ends at C. So this is an example of an A to C walk. But it's not a trail because we've repeated some edges. For instance, we went, let's see, we went A, B, D, E, F, G, E. Uh, then we went to D again, right? So we have this edge D, E that we traversed, but then we traversed it again when we did E, D. So since we traveled that edge twice, it's not gonna be a trail. So let's give an example of an A to C trail. We could do something like A, B, D, E, F, G, E, C. All right, so what am I doing in this path? Well, I go from A to B to D to E to F to G to E to C. I didn't repeat any edges, and if you don't believe me, you could trace it out with a marker or something, right? A to B to D to E. F, G, E, C. So there were no repeated edges here. We did repeat the vertex E in the center. We had to travel through that vertex E twice in order to complete this particular trail, but we didn't repeat any edges, which makes this an example of an A to C trail, but not an A to C path. Remember, for an A to C path, you're not allowed to repeat any vertices either. And so finally, let's give an example of an A to C path. I'll give a few. One of them's really simple, right? A and C are adjacent. So we have this really simple example of the path AC. If you wanted a little bit more complicated one, maybe something like A, B, D, E, C, or something like that. All right, so there's lots of different ones. We just want to make sure that there's no repeated vertices here. If there's no repeated vertices, then there won't be any repeated edges, and this is going to be a path. All right, now, the question is, if you have a walk, let's say from A to C in a graph, are you guaranteed to also have a path? In other words, if you can get from one vertex to another by repeating some vertices and edges, could you also transform that into a path where you're not repeating any vertices or edges? Let's think about how that would work in this example here. So we started with this particular walk, A, B, D, E, F, G, E, D, B, C, and we know that we've repeated vertices, right? We visited E multiple times, we visited D multiple times. And so uh, a natural question would be, well, could, could I have done this in a more efficient way without repeating these vertices? And it seems like we can because, for example, I visited E twice, right? I visited it here and here. And so I could have just sort of taken this part between these two E's, this F, G, E part, and just taken it out and it would still be a path in the end, or sorry, it would still be a walk, possibly not a path yet, All right? If I take out this uh, F, G, E part of my walk, I would be left with A, B, D, E, right? And from here, I know I should be able to get back to D again, B, C, All right? This is still an A to C walk. Um, now, is it a path? No, because I can see here that I've, I've hit the vertex D twice. But I can do the same process here where I say, okay, we'll just take, take the part between these two D visits and delete them. And now I'm going to be left with A, B, D, B, C. Okay, well, it's still not a path because I visited B twice. But I can take the part of my path between these two Bs, right, this part here, delete it, and I'm left with A, B, C. And that is going to be a path. Right, so the idea that you can just take these sort of unnecessary extra parts of your walk and delete them enough to leave you with just a path um, brings us to theorem 1.3.1, which says if you have a graph G which contains a walk from U to V of a particular length, we'll call it L, then in fact that graph G actually also contains a U to V path of length less than or equal to L. 
So possibly it's it's going to be the same length if your walk is already a path. Um, otherwise, that length would be smaller. All right. So to prove that this is true for any graph G, uh, let's see. Let's, well, start off by assuming that if part here, that the graph G actually contains a U to V walk of length L. So assume G contains a U to V walk of length L. All right, well, then we can just sort of look at all the different possible U to V walks in this graph and say, let's pick up the shortest possible one. All right, so let's let P be a U to V walk of minimum length. Right, maybe that minimum length is it's less than L, but it might actually be equal to L. So if, if we say that the minimum possible length over all these different walks is K, we would have that K must be less than or equal to L. Um, and so let's just express this path as follows, right? Maybe we'll start it with, well, we know it's going from U to V. I'll call U, our first vertex, U0. Um, and then I'll call the other vertices in the path, maybe U1, U2, U3, all the way up to UK. Right, and again, the first vertex has to be U, the last vertex has to be V. So I'm just giving the name U0 for that first vertex U and UK for the last vertex V. And this is going to be a path of length K, right? Here's your first edge, your second edge, your third edge, all the way to your Kth edge. All right, now we're going to prove that this path P of minimal length, or sorry, uh, this walk of minimal length is in fact a path. So we claim that P is a path. Right, that there's no possible way that if this is a minimum length walk, there's no possible way that there can be any repeated vertices or edges. So to prove that, let's try to prove it by contradiction. So assume by way of contradiction that P is not a path. Right, so what does that mean? It means that there has to be some repeated vertex somewhere in this list, right? Somewhere among these k plus one many vertices, you've repeated one of them. So that is, assume that we have some i and j, where ui is equal to uj for different indices u and j, right? So maybe u1 is equal to u3 or u0 is equal to u5 or something, right? Assume ui and uj are equal to each other for some indices i and j. That are not equal to each other and that lie between 0 and k that lie somewhere in this path. Well, so we're going to use the same idea here where we're saying if you have two repeated vertices, like we had up here, we had uh, from E to E, we're just going to delete everything in the path that's sort of in between there, right? Delete starting at E, everything after it up to the next occurrence of E. We'll do the same thing here. So we delete the vertices v sub i plus 1 through v sub j. Whoops, sorry, these aren't v's, these are u's, my bad. u sub j. And that leaves us with a new path, we'll call it p prime, which is going to be, okay, again, we start at vertex u, which we're calling u0, then go to u1 and keep going until you get to your first ui. But then we delete everything after that until we get to vj, and then oh, uj, and continue with u sub j plus 1, u sub j plus 2, until we get to u sub k, which is the final vertex in our graph, or in our path, v. All right. In other words, we must have removed at least one edge here. And so, since we removed at least one edge, We're left with 
a new path. Uh, U to V. Well, I guess I should call it a walk. I don't know for sure that it's a path. I'm left with some new U to V walk of length less than K. Right, since the original path was length K, we deleted at least one edge. So this new path is still gonna be a path from U to V, but now it's got a shorter length. This is a contradiction because we started off by assuming that P was minimal length. This is a contradiction. And thus, we have that P must have been a path. And so if you do have a U to V walk, then you must also have a U to V path, and that path will have length K, where K is less than or equal to the length L of your original walk. All right, and so this sort of brings us to the idea of, well, if you can find a, a path, or if you can find a walk between any two vertices, then you can find a path, and if you can find a path, between a pair of vertices, then we say that pair of vertices are connected, right? So we say that if there's some U to V path in a graph G, then the vertices U and V are connected. No, this is very important. This does not mean that U and V are adjacent, right? It doesn't mean that there's an edge between them. There could be, but there's not necessarily, right? If we go back to this picture up here, we would say that a and H are connected in the graph because there's a path between them, A, C, E, F, H. That doesn't mean that they're adjacent. That doesn't mean there's an edge between them. It just means you can follow edges in your graph and get from one to another. And so if we say that every possible pair of vertices in your graph are connected, if you can get from any one vertex to another along a path, we say that the graph is a connected graph. So let's just wrap up by looking at a couple of examples here. Here's a graph G and a graph H. One of these graphs is connected and the other is not. So remember, to be connected means you can pick any two vertices in the graph and you'll be able to follow a path from one to the other. Is that true in both of these? No, it's not gonna be true in the graph G. Because even though you could get, let's say, from A to D, or from A to C, or from B to E, you can't get from A to B. So G is not connected. And that's because there is no, for example, A to B path in this graph. There's no way to ever get from A to B, or from A to E, or from D to E. Okay, there's lots of examples. But for H, this is a connected graph. If you pick any two vertices in this graph, there's gonna be a path connecting them, right? Here's a path from A to B, A to C, A to D, A to E, B to C, B to D, uh, C to D, oh, B to E, okay, they're all there. I, I trust that you can check. This is a connected graph. This graph H is connected. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about how we can sort of classify connected graphs and a few more definitions in the next video.